In this video, we would be going through the connectors paradigm of creating connectors using the connector controls for defining the welds and the fasteners. Now that we have completed the meshing of sheet metal parts and the cast part, we will go about defining the connection for the welds and the bolts through the connectors creation. Let's have a closer look at the model with the welds in them. As you see on my screen, the sheet metal parts are connected through welds, which are defined through solid CADs. So these are some of the locations of the seam weld within the model. And some of the other regions where you have the welds are seen here in green and gray solid components, which are seam welds within the model. And this sheet metal parts are connected to the cast part at the bottom through bolts. There are two bolt connections connecting to the cast bracket, which is in red. So let's go to the connectors menu bar and let's click on the controls ribbon. So this opens the control manager or the con connection control manager, which has different types of uh, connections here. So let's create some controls for the line connectors. So I'd call this a seam quad LTB. So in the type, I set it to seam quad LTB and define some common parameters in terms of the gap between the parts, the pitch size, which is nothing but the base mesh size to have a proper connectivity between the two components on weld realization and some of the parameters for L, T and B shapes for the seam quad LTB. I can define multiple controls within the same control file. So I'll also go ahead and define another control here for the smaller weld, which is in terms of hexa RB to RB3 for the welds that are in green. So let me create another control here. So I go to type and set it to hex RB to RB3 and I rename this control as hex RB to RB3. And define the parameters in terms of tolerance and pitch. So once we have these controls defined, I'll go ahead and define the fastener type of a control here for connecting two sheet metal parts through a rigid spider. As you see on my screen, here is a location where I need to put a rigid spider connecting the red and the uh, beige component. So I go ahead and create bolt spider here. I set it to the type called as bolt spider. And bolt spider sort of a configuration is basically a rigid spider connecting the two sheet metal parts. And going through uh, the help gives a lot more details on different realization types that we have on the core. And accordingly, the users can leverage the different connection types through the connector control manager and create those connections quickly on the fly in a very simple way of connecting parts. Now that I have defined the spool spider as well as the line type of connector controls here. This control file can then be saved as a HM database file as you see on my screen. And this can then be saved and circulated between the members in the team for creating similar types of wells as you see on my screen. And in such cases, the user does not have to go through creating these controls every time they go about creating the connection. So they can use the same HM database file of the controls and proceed. So I go to line connector here and set it at solid. And in the undefined space, I select the control which is seam quad LTB and choose all the solid wells which comprise of a seam quad LTB sort of a connection. Here this configuration is basically connecting the two sheet metal parts through quad elements with node to node connectivity between the two parts. Now you see 
There are 10 solids being populated in the solid section on clicking the play button. Go ahead and realize these connectors. I can go to the connector browser by clicking on connectors menu, ribbon and then you see the connector browser populating it. Now I can go ahead and create the hexa RB2 RB3 for these wells here. So all I do is select the solid CAD and click on the play button and this quickly realizes the connectors. So the green represents that the connectors are realized successfully without any failures in realization. So just let me go ahead and create the fastener here by selecting the node and setting it to bolt spider and I choose one of the nodes where I want the rigid spider connectivity between the two components. So this creates a connector called fasteners with bolt rigid spider connecting the two sheet metal parts. And this can then be seen in the connector browser under the fastener tab. So just let me isolate only the elements here and you can have a closer look at all the well location. This is a quad elements connecting the two sheet metal parts through the seam quad LTB that we just realized. Let me turn on the connectors as well. You can have a look at the wells defined through connectors using seam quad LTB. So we have the quad elements connecting the two sheet metal parts. Let's have a look at the other locations in the model. So here you see the quad weld elements. And this is a different configuration here for this bracket, which is hex RB to RB3, connecting the blue bracket to the maroon component. And the fastener locations with bolt rigid spider connecting the two sheet metal parts. So all these are now connected through connectors workflow where the wells are defined. So just to check the connectivity, I select an element, right click to uh, launch the graphical context menu and say attached and you can see that all of my components or the elements are attached through the weld connection, which we just defined through connectors. Now we also have the bolts that connect the sheet metal parts to the cast component, which is the bracket at the bottom. So here we go about creating attachments at these two bolt locations. So let's go to connectors menu bar and click on controls. And here we go to attachment type and create a control for attachments here. So I call this as attachment, which is a rigid spider at the interface point connecting the two subsystem. So I just give a maximum diameter of the hole as 30 here and go about creating the attachments. I click on the attachment ribbon, set it to attachment and select the nodes at the interface point. And here you see the attachment being created on the red sheet metal part. So since we have two bolts connecting the red sheet metal part with the cast component, which is yellow. So I create four attachments, two on the sheet metal part and two on the either end on the cast component. So basically we have four attachments created here. So once these attachments are created, the connection between the attachments can then be done through connect which I'll show you as we're going along through the video. So let me quickly go to the connector browser here. I can always unrealize them to remove the connection. So I say unrealize and you see the elements being turned off and I say re-realize or realize again. So you see the attachments being created. The same controls can be done for the line connectors as well, as well as the bolt spider. So I can right click unrealize and right click re-realize, which establishes the connection. So 
So now that we have defined the connectors, let me go ahead to the model browser and create a component called as the rigid underscore spider. So basically what I would be doing is creating rigids to apply the boundary conditions for one of the subsystems. I'll just change the collector red, go to model and click on rigids. And in here, I go to nodes and then in the advanced selection I set it to edge and I use free loops here and say no washer so that I'll be able to select the free loop just on one click of a button and then I say play and here I have my rigids created in one simple shot the same I do on the other end as well so these rigid spider I'm creating is basically to apply my SPC boundary conditions. Now this is another bracket where I'm setting up the free loops but with one layer option so it basically selects one layer of washer nodes as well while it's creating the rigid spiders. I do the same on the other side as well and I click the edge and the washer nodes are also selected. This way I add the rigid spider. So these are the mount locations for the top subsystem where I'm going to constrain as I'm going to do the simulation in my subsequent video. So once these rigids are created, I'll go ahead and create another components called as rigid underscore two for the mount locations for the cast component, which is the bracket in yellow at the bottom that you see on my screen. So let me go ahead and create another components here is called as rigid underscore two and set a color to it. Now that I've created the component, let me go to model, say rigids, and here I choose face. And I start picking the face here, and as I'm picking, you see the rigids being updated on the fly, and on clicking the play button, the rigid element throughout the face is being created in a single shot. You see the rigid being created. I'll do the same on the other four locations. So the rigid spider is now created for the mount location of the cast component, which is in the bottom bracket. So let me pick the face and I have the rigid getting updated on the fly as I pick the faces. So I click create and I have the rigids created. Let me do the same on the other end of the mount location. So I pick the face and the rigid spider gets updated and I click the play button and the rigid spider is created. Now I set it to nodes and use the advanced selection as edge to pick the washer layer. So I use node option and go to advanced selection and say by edge with the washer option layer as one and I have the spider created. Do the same for this mount location as well. So we have the spiders created. So now that we have the spiders created on both the subsystems on top for the sheet metal and the cast component at the bottom, as well as the connections created. So my materials and properties as well have been created in this model. In the next video, we'll go about creation of subsystem and setting up the model for analysis.